Hello and welcome to our live stream. My name is Christiana and I'm the media director here at Oceanside Community Church. We're so glad that you've decided to join us this morning and hope that you'll be blessed by today's service. If you'd like to find out more about us, ways to give, ways to connect, or upcoming church events, you can visit us online at www.oceansidecommunitychurch.ca. If you're new, feel free to fill out one of our digital connection cards on our website's homepage. We'd love to get to know you a little bit better. We'd also love to hear from you during the service, so feel free to join in the live chat. So whether you're watching us on our website, YouTube channel, or Facebook page, we're grateful that you've decided to join us this morning and invite you to take the following minutes to prepare your hearts to worship the Lord alongside us today. Oceanside. We want to welcome you to our Easter Sunday celebration. We're so glad that you are joining us on the live stream, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or on our websites, whether watching this live or perhaps later taking the time to worship the risen King, Jesus Christ, our Lord. There is an ancient tradition on Easter Sunday that goes back uh, many hundreds of years where uh, the leader says, he is risen, and the congregation responds, he is risen indeed. And so you're obviously not here right now to be able to do that, but I encourage you after I say this to uh, still proclaim it to the world by just typing it in or saying it in your home or in your living room or wherever you might be. So he is risen. Amen. Well, uh, we couldn't hear you, but we know that you are celebrating that with us. And here is what we're celebrating this morning. I'm going to read the text from Luke 24. We'll take a look at Matthew's version in just a few minutes later. But it says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed light, like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. That's what we're celebrating this morning. So why don't you join us in this celebratory song as we celebrate Jesus' resurrection and life. It's the greatest day in history. The greatest day in history. Death is beaten. You have rescued me. Shout out, Jesus is alive. Cross the empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive. Oh, happy day, happy day, you wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day.
Good morning, everyone, and happy Easter. He is risen. Last Sunday was Palm Sunday, when we remember how Jesus rode into Jerusalem riding on a donkey and how everyone welcomed him as their saving king. This past Friday was Good Friday, when we remember how Jesus showed his great love for us by dying on the cross for our sins, taking our punishment on himself. And today is Easter Sunday when we celebrate that Jesus is still alive because he rose from the grave. After Jesus was killed, his body was placed in a tomb carved out of rock and a big round stone was rolled in front of the entrance. Before Jesus died, he had told people that he would rise again in three days. On that third day, two women who knew and loved Jesus, named Mary and Mary, went to go check on his body. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled the stone away from the tomb, and sat on top of it. The angel saw the two women that came to see Jesus and told them, Do not be afraid. I know you're here looking for Jesus, but he is not here. He has risen. He told them to go and tell the rest of Jesus' friends this great news. On Easter, we celebrate how Jesus proved once and for all that he is the powerful Son of God. By living a perfect life and dying on the cross, Jesus took the punishment for all our sins. When Jesus rose back to life from the grave, he showed that he is more powerful than death and that whoever believes in him can live with him forever. And now we celebrate that he rose from the grave. And just like the two women who came to see his body at the tomb, we can let others know this great news by talking to them about Jesus and even celebrating with our special Easter phrase today. He is risen. 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 He, he is risen! risen. Jesus' body is gone. He has risen. Are you serious? Yes, he has risen indeed. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. He has risen indeed. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even when they die. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Give place to God. In his great mercy, he has given. 
given us a new birth and a living hope. This hope is living because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He is risen. He is risen! Yes. He is Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. He is risen! I know that, that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end, He will stand on the earth. He is risen! He is risen in death! He is risen in death! He will swallow up death forever! The Lord and King will wipe away the tears from everyone's face. He will remove the shame of His people from the whole earth. The Lord has spoken. He is risen. He is risen in deed. This next song is inspired by this passage. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Let's sing, let no one. Let no one caught in sin remain. Inside the lie of inward shame, but fix our eyes upon the cross and run to him who showed great love and bled for us, freely bled for us. Christ is real. From the dead, trampling over death by death. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. Christ is risen from the dead, we are one with him again. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. Christ 
That is uh, so much what we celebrate today, that we can come alive through Jesus. And we're going to talk about that in uh, just a few moments. But first, just want to welcome you and greet you and say Happy Easter to you. And we're so happy that you have found us here online. Uh, as you may know, we are also meeting outdoors today. And so many will be with us uh, in our outdoor services. But perhaps that uh, doesn't work for you at, at this point, or you're just finding out about it now. Um, but either way, we're happy that we could be with you here in this way online. And we will continue to be online every single Sunday. Our time has been 10 a.m. And uh, we'll see whether or not we change that moving forward as we also begin these regular weekly outdoor services. Uh, the best way to kind of keep up with what we're doing is by always checking our website and seeing uh, what the most uh, recent news is because uh, times are often changing and shifting these days as we get new word of what we uh, are able to do as things open up a little bit. But either way, we're just so glad you're with us. Feel free to shoot us a message if you're joining us, particularly if you're new. Maybe you've moved into the area over the last few months or year and uh, are finally getting around to uh, being able to search for a faith community as uh, we're able to gather again. We're glad you're here. You can email us at info at oceansidecc.ca with any of your questions. Also on the homepage, of our website. There's lots of information. There's a connection card that you can fill out to tell us a little bit about who you are. Uh, there's also links to our YouTube page where all these services and messages and many other videos are there, content uh, for kids and uh, all of our social media channels. Feel free to send us a message on any of those as well, and we will get back in touch with you. So feel free to reach out. Do want to let you know about those outdoor services moving forward. Again, times will be to be determined today. They've been at 9 and 11, uh, but in future weeks, uh, we'll see and we'll release that information early this week about when uh, they'll be next Sunday. So feel free to register for that. We have separate registration program for kids. You can also register uh, your one vehicle. Uh, and we have some spots for vehicles if you want to stay in your vehicle the entire time for whatever reason, if you just feel safer that way or that just works for you for any way. And then we have the up to 50 normal kind of outdoor gathering there. So all that is on our registration page, which you can find on our website. Well, thanks for your uh, faithful giving as we make all these transitions as a church. Uh, Easter is, of course, a day to remember uh, what carries on into the next life. What is the resurrection life going to be like? And one of the things we know for sure that we read in the Bible is that the way we give, the way we use our time, our talents, and our treasure in this life carries over into the next life. The Bible talks a lot about storing our treasures in heaven. And so one of the ways we make eternal impact is through uh, our generosity and our giving to the Lord's work. And so we encourage you to uh, do that on this Easter as a way to celebrate our resurrection life and the life that is to come. And all the ways to give are on your screen there. And there's a giving page on our website that outlines all of those options for you. And so we, we thank you for that. Well, we've been on a journey as a church through all of Lent and leading up to uh, this past week, which has been Holy Week. And last Sunday was Palm Sunday, and we talked a little bit about the final week of Jesus' life. And hopefully you joined us on Good Friday as we reflected on his death on the cross. And here's just a few highlights from last week's message that bring us uh, through Holy Week and anticipate this moment of Resurrection Sunday. So the scene is Jesus' arrival at Jerusalem. The disciples are probably wondering, how is Jesus going to make his grand entrance? But what does Jesus do? He says, go and get me a donkey. 
And the donkey is in direct contrast to the war horse of a military leader. He doesn't come to wage war, but to wash feet. Main application, which is this. Jesus comes to us in humble and unexpected ways. What Jesus shows us in the last week of his life by riding in on a donkey, washing his disciples feet on Thursday night and humbly going to the cross on Friday is that he associates most closely with the lowly, the hurting, the suffering, and especially the humble of heart. No one, no race, no class, no gender, no ability group has hierarchy over another or has an edge in spiritual standing before God. What we're reminded of on Palm Sunday is that he is the humble king, the God of humility who loves humility, the part of God's humility that he takes weak men and women like me and you, fills us with himself through his spirit. It's this amazing divine treasure in fragile jars of clay. Well, it's been a great, if not unique, Holy Week here at Oceanside. Uh, we had yesterday a wonderful family Easter scavenger hunt where families from all across the community, from our church family as well as beyond, participating and out in their cars and drive-by events, picking up clues and then coming back uh, here to the church and picking up their prizes. And it was a, a great time. And so we're so happy to be doing things again, particularly with our kids. And uh, I'll remind you that we have our kids programs now going uh, every Sunday, separate to our adult outdoor services as well, if you want to participate in those. Well, we're excited to share God's word with you this Easter as we uh, look into this Easter Sunday, the events of this day we celebrate. Have you ever felt so lost in life, so desperate for answers as to what is going on in your life, and so afraid of the answers you might find that you just decide not to face the realities of life, and instead just to put your head down and, and keep going so you don't have to actually stop and think about what is happening and what has happened. In fact, maybe you feel that way this morning. Your biggest fear in coming to an Easter service, even if online, is that you might actually have to take a moment to think about your life. Well, interestingly, that first Easter, there were some people in a similar situation. This morning, I want to take you into the story of the first people to see Jesus alive. Let me take you to Matthew 28. Just after Jesus' death and burial on Friday, which was followed by the Jewish Sabbath on Saturday. And so it says here in verse 1 of Matthew chapter 28 that after the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. The other Gospels uh, also mention Salome and Joanna, so potentially four women, uh, maybe more, who knows. So what were these women doing? What were they expecting by going to the tomb. Well, we learn in Mark, uh, Mark's version of the gospel in chapter 16 that as soon as the Sabbath ended and the Jewish Sabbath went from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday, as soon as the Sabbath ended, so that is Saturday night, these women went out and bought spices in preparation to go anoint Jesus' body. Uh, whereas we would imagine a store, you know, opening first thing in the morning uh, for the Jews, they would have reopened in the evening after ceasing from commerce for 24 hours. So they've been waiting around for the Sabbath to end, waiting for something to do to take their minds off their pain. And so as soon as they can, they go out and buy these spices to prepare to go anoint Jesus' body. And this was kind of a, a similar ritual to, say, taking flowers to a gravesite. They went to, you know, show their love and, and probably to grieve at the tomb of Jesus. 
And so imagine with me, they take their burial spices home on Saturday evening. The impression is they must have barely slept, uh, that they're still so distraught. They're up late Saturday night buying and preparing spices. And according to John, they were up early Sunday morning, so early that according to John in chapter 20, it was still dark when they left. And it was only early dawn by the time they arrived at the tomb. And they have no expectation whatsoever of Jesus' resurrection. Otherwise, they wouldn't be bringing burial spices. In fact, they're not even sure they'll be able to get to Jesus' body at all. Mark's gospel tells us on the way to the tomb, they were asking each other, well, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? And we have lots of pictures that uh, archaeology has uncovered of these garden tombs with with the rolling uh, stone in front of them. And it was pretty easy to roll the stone into uh, the pre-cut groove in front of the entrance. But as you can imagine, once you get that big kind of round stone into place and sort of roll it down into that groove, it's pretty difficult then to push it up out of that groove. And certainly not something these four women could or were planning on doing. So they're not even sure how they're going to get to Jesus' body. So why are they going to the tomb with these burial spices? Well, until this week when we decided to preach on this text, uh, I'd never really asked the question or felt the need to ask. But when you think about it, it makes no sense. They don't even really have a plan. They're bringing spices to a tomb they have no way to even get into. It's like they're all kind of too scared to talk about the reality of what they might find. I mean, no one has the answer for what they're actually going to do when they get there. So here's what I kind of think is going on here. They don't know what to do. They just know they need to do something. And they know they want to be somewhere that might help them feel close to Jesus. The thought of what has happened to their beloved Jesus, the ones they thought, the one they thought that was the Messiah, to sit with that reality of his death is just too heavy, too overwhelming for them to face. And so they just stay busy. They go and buy spices as soon as the market opens on Saturday evening. And they spend time that evening staying busy, preparing spices. And then after barely sleeping, if they slept at all, they rise while it's still dark and they meet together and set out for the tomb before it's even dawn with no real plan, no real understanding of what this day or the next day will be like, just going to be somewhere where they think they might somehow find some answers to their despair. And what do they find? What happens? Well, verses two through nine here of Matthew 28 says this. They get to the tomb and it says there was a violent earthquake for the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples, and suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said, and they came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. My guess is a lot of us this morning are maybe like these women. 
I mean, we've been through a lot of darkness lately. The world is on edge. Our hope is fragile, if not crushed. We're in despair. We feel the awful dead silence of Saturday. We're not really sure what to do. We're not really sure what to expect. We might even be wondering, like the women, like, what has happened? And Lord, where are you in this? And we don't even know exactly where to go to look for answers, to find direction. And so we just keep ourselves busy. We move from one thing to the next, afraid like the women to ask why we're even doing what we're doing, perhaps afraid of the answers we would find. And so we crowd every spare moment with news, sports, scrolling through our feeds on Instagram or Facebook, reading a book or watching TV up until the very second we're ready to fall asleep so that we don't have to face the reality of the condition of our lives or our hearts or souls or the questions we're unwilling to face about our life and what this all means. We don't know what to do, but we know we need something. But what is it? Where do we find it? Where can we look? Maybe you're not even sure why you're here this morning watching this live stream, how you ended up here. You just knew you needed to be somewhere that might help give you some hope. And like the women, you might be quite surprised at what you find, and that is this. That Jesus is alive. In all our looking, our striving, our keeping busy, our moving from one task to the next, like the women, our, our sleepless nights of despair, like these women, wondering how we can move forward in life behind all of that, Jesus is up to something, is working even in the darkness of the tomb behind the insurmountable stone. You may not even think he's alive. You may have given up hope. You're not even sure why you're on the way to the tomb. The stone you're facing looks impossible to roll away, but fear not, because perhaps to your surprise, the stone is gone and Jesus is alive. And how does Jesus being alive change everything? Well, I could give you a, a hundred examples and a whole bunch of scriptures, but let's just stick with our story here this morning. Jesus being alive means, number one, we no longer have to be afraid. Verse five. My prayer for you this morning is the spirit of God, like the angel here in verse five, might say to your heart, do not be afraid, for I know you are looking for Jesus. When someone has conquered the one enemy, death, that no one else has ever con conquered, when we don't have to fear death, when we know who our lives and souls belong to and who will take care of them after we die, then nothing can make us truly afraid. So number one, we no longer have to be afraid. Second, Jesus being alive means we have true joy. Before coming to the tomb, these women couldn't have been any more hopeless or in despair. All they were living for, they thought was gone. It was over. But now everything has changed. Nothing is the same. And now, verse 8, it says they are filled with joy at Jesus' resurrection, knowing he is now alive. And then lastly, Je Jesus being alive means we have a renewed purpose. Verse 10, then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid, same word as the angel, go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee 
for there they will see me. There's a job to do. We aren't just waiting around until we die and are fully with Jesus. He has a purpose and a plan for us, a mission for us, something to go and do. I mean, these women went from hopeless, confused, in despair, to now being the first people entrusted with the most important message the world has ever known. They now have a mission. And if you keep reading the Bible, the New Testament, you find this small group of women and men end up changing the world and changing lives. They create communities that share and take care of each other and those in need. They create uh, communities and cities of peace and justice and fairness and equity. They give status and leadership to women in ways the world had never seen. They pay attention to the poor. They say no to greed and living for themselves and live for something greater. Because Jesus is alive, their lives and the lives of those around them begin to change. Their fear and despair was gone. Their joy restored and their purpose clear. Because of one event. And listen, I don't think these women had it all figured out at that point. They probably didn't even really know or understand exactly what was going on. They didn't have a developed theology or teaching of how this was all possible, what it meant. They didn't have it all sorted out. But you know, Jesus met them quite literally in verse 9 where they were at on the road. Will you let him do the same with you this morning? I can't explain it all to you this morning, the whole story and what it means that Jesus is alive, but I can tell you that since that day 2,000 years ago, where these hopeless and in despair women were transformed into mighty messengers, since that day over 2 billion people have also found this to be true, have had their fear taken away because Jesus has overcome the grave, have been filled with joy through encountering Jesus and have had their lives filled with a greater purpose. Like those women, you don't have to have it all figured out today. Just take that first step, like the women, of going to where Jesus could possibly be. Maybe without knowing exactly what you're looking for or expecting, but just looking for something, some answer, some hope. And we'd love to come along with you on that journey. And whether this is your first time ever hearing this story, or more likely for many of you, you've heard it, you, you once knew it, what it meant that Jesus is alive, but lately you've been stumbling in the darkness keeping yourself distracted from what's really going on in your soul. And today, Jesus is calling you back to him. And so no matter where you are today or why you're here, would you join me now in a moment of prayer? And you can either just pray quietly in your heart with me these words, or if you want to say them out loud, use your own words if you want, but something like this, Jesus I'm lost, (laughs) going to and fro, place to place, not sure what to do, where to go for answers, where my place is, where you are. And so I come today looking for you, to you, not quite sure what to expect, but I'm searching. It feels as if there's a, a huge stone in the way, but I ask you would roll it away. And come to me with your greeting and reveal to me your resurrection life and truth. Take away my fear. Fill me with joy and reveal your purpose to me. Amen. Well, after these women met Jesus, it says in verse 9 that they took hold of his feet And they worshiped him. And that's a great response. So let's close this morning by worshiping him 
with this uh, great and traditional Easter hymn. Christ the Lord is risen today, hallelujah. Sons of men and angels say, hallelujah. Raise your joys and triumphs high, been an honor and a blast for us to worship with you in this way on this Easter morning. Remember that you can now meet in person with us and through outdoor services uh, for the foreseeable future. So you can find all that information on our website or just reach out to us. But we hope you have a wonderful and amazing and happy Easter and may the resurrection life of Jesus be with you today. Happy Easter. Easter.